the waters of planet Earth are home to a variety of fearsome creatures, and this of course extends to freshwater as well. The widely popular show River Monsters does a good job showcasing this with the plethora of different nightmares that they find lurking in our water, such as piranhas, sharks, electric eels, and more. However, despite these creatures being no doubt scary, these guys actually pale in comparison to the true river monsters of Earth, a group of predatory fish which, fortunately for us, are no longer around. But once upon a time, they were both extremely plentiful and widespread terrorizing all that lived in their realm and those who dared to venture close. These were the Rhizodontids. This diverse group of tetrapodomorphs emerged during the Devonian period some 400 million years ago, with its first member, the Sauripterus, which means lizard wing. However, it might as well have been given a name which means conqueror, as it didn't take long for this new animal to absolutely dominate its habitat. Nature built it with a powerful design in mind, which included a well-developed internal skeleton, an elongated trunk and large pectoral fins that were covered in overlapping scales, essentially turning them into paddles that granted it excellent locomotion. It also helped that it had one hellish bite, as upon biting down, its mandibles would actually turn inwards towards each other, locking unfortunate victims into place. The Ceripterus also had imposing dentition, including a row of small yet robust and conical teeth, medium-sized fangs, and large tusks to top it all off all of which made it harder for any unfortunate prey to survive encounters with this beast. Paleontologists further suggest that it would have had a powerful bite based upon the anatomy of its skull. Perhaps the only downside of this river monster was its size, as it was only about 1 meter or 3.3 feet long, which meant that it was still a good size for the Devonian, but by no means the biggest animal around in its freshwater ecosystem. However, this problem wouldn't last forever as the rhizodontids that followed Sereptorus grew bigger and bigger until they started to become perhaps the worst thing you could ever imagine swimming into, which is exemplified by the Baramita, meaning fish trap, which emerged during the start of the Carboniferous period in Australia. Unlike its ancestor, this fish was a giant which could easily reach 3 to 4 meters or 9.8 or 13.1 feet in length making it probably the largest freshwater fish to live in Australia during this period. Additional changes that made it yet even more deadly than its predecessor were thick bony plates covering its head, increased elongation and thickness of its body, a tightly fused skull, and even more prominent fangs, giving it an almost vampirish presence. With its size and other assets, the Baramita was no doubt the apex predator of its time, and would have feasted on anything that it could catch in rivers and lakes including fish, sharks, lungfish, and tetrapods. Even other lobefish were not safe and were probably a regular part of its diet. But even the Baramita wouldn't be the climax of the Rhizodontids, as approximately 40 million years later, this group got another new addition that not only triumphed in a certain way over the other members in its group, but also over every other freshwater fish ever. And this was the Rhizodus. This freshwater jaws was like other rhizodonts in many ways, but had two distinct advantages. The first being that its fangs were significantly larger than those found on the rest of its relatives, and that's saying a lot as prominent fangs were a hallmark of this group. The fangs on Rhizodus commonly reached 8.7 inches or 22 centimeters in length, which is about the same length as the average tooth of an adult T-Rex. The Rhizodus' second advantage was that it was an absolute giant. In fact, the Rhizodus was not only the largest member of its family, but also the largest freshwater fish we know of, period. It was an absolute monster which possibly grew to 7 meters or 23 feet and weighed around 1.5 metric tons, making about the same size as a large great white shark and heavier than the heaviest saltwater crocodile ever recorded. It would have used its large size and deadly bite to hunt a variety of prey which included medium-sized fish and tetrapods. Paleontologists speculate that its killing mechanism was similar to that of a modern crocodile, as it had both a flexible spine and shiftable jaws that allowed it to death roll with prey in its mouth, where its fangs would then shred the poor animal until they were ripped into small enough pieces to be swallowed and digested. This terrible fate awaited all those that swam in its path. However, being a true river monster, the Rhizodus and others in its family did not stop with freshwater prey, as it is believed to have preyed on shorebound terrestrial animals as well. The speculation derives from what appears to be track marks depicting a rhizodont using its massive paddle-like fins to lunge up on a shorebank. 
This behemoth was certainly no joke, and its traits allowed it to become one of the group's most widespread members, with fossils being discovered in England, Russia, and possibly North America. Fossil locations also show that it seemed to prefer slow-moving bodies of water that accumulated a lot of debris. And due to its large size, one may assume that living in water that was cramped with fallen trees would not be ideal. However, the Rhizidus used its waterscape to its advantage as it would hide around and under fallen trees where it would wait to ambush unsuspecting prey. Which means that for every animal that wasn't a Rhizidus, a corner possibly spelled certain doom. On top of this, this behemoth also possessed a cylindrical body that granted it a heightened level of flexibility that meant it could easily twist, turn, and maneuver through heavy debris while swimming at high speeds. It would be an understatement not to call the Rhizidus anything but the pinnacle of the Rhizodonts, as it brilliantly represented everything that they embodied, being terrifying, efficient, successful, and downright freaky. Perhaps thankfully though, the world wouldn't see a new and improved version of the Rhizidus as it was the last of its kind, disappearing some 323 million years ago in association with the Serpicovian extinction event which was the largest extinction event to take place during the Carboniferous period where during its peak, the world saw an extinction rate of over 24%. It was during this time the true river monsters of Earth finally faded away, and while other river monsters have emerged that are no doubt intimidating, none have come close to capturing the fear that Rhizidus and its family members must have instilled into the fresh waters of Earth. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, and maybe even subscribe. Until next time on Extinct Zoo.